you look at the schedule, this talk is about, um, the talk on there is about how our team picked um, the MVC framework that we're going to be working with. Because when I talked to Glenn, um, that's what we were working on. So I was like, and then I'll talk about it because we'll probably find something awesome. But um, so we haven't picked one yet. <laughs> so <laughs> we're still researching. Um, so anyway, uh, this is, um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about an extension I built and browser extensions in general. Uh, I think they're kind of interesting and they're JavaScript, so and they, they don't get talked about a lot. So we're going to talk about building them and, um, and what they are made of. Okay, I made these slides today. This is the first time I'm doing HTML slides, so we'll see how it goes. I have a backup if I need to switch. Um, so who am I? I'm um, a CTO of the company called the Levo League. We're based in New York. We do career advice and mentorship geared towards women. I also started an organization called Girl Develop It. Um, we teach low cost software development classes that are also geared towards women. Men are very much invited though. We have about 50, yes. How can I be a teacher? <laughs> oh, well, let me tell you more. <laughs> so we have, um, we have 12 chapters and we're in three countries. We've had over 2,000 students for, unique students for in-person classes. So we teach everything from HTML, CSS, to Mongo, to Rails, and stuff like that. So um, if, you, if Shanghai is interested, we'd love to work with you guys. And I have been doing professional software development for 11 years now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Okay, so um, my, you're gonna see the most cat to slide ratio in my, in my projection, I think. Um, one, thing, one thing I found today is that um, I haven't had too much issues with the firewall. The one thing I found is that your Google image search returns much less pictures of cats than ours does. So you guys are missing out. <laughs> so anyway, um, I hate um, my inbox, like a lot of us, um, you know, like, and I think we all think this way, like, oh, I'm super busy, and everyone always wants to write to me, and I just can't get back to all these emails. So I made this cat look super sophisticated because, like, sometimes that's how I feel. Like, I have so much, so much, so much in my inbox. I can't, I can't even, I can't even deal with all of, all of it. So I had this great idea that I was just going to have one of those outbound emails, right? So when everyone sends you an email, it's just going to go out, and I was going to say something like, "Listen." I'm really sorry, I really appreciate your email, but I'm really busy and it's really hard for me to get back to you, so if you don't hear it from me, sorry, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so and, uh, so that's, that was my game plan. I was like trying to think of a way to put it nicely, but there's no way to say that nicely or not sounding like a jerk, because it kind of means you're a jerk. Um, this guy, his name is Dale Carnegie, and he, he wrote a book called um, How to Make Friends and Influence People. Um, and he tells um, in his book a story about, um, he had this author he really looked up to, this guy Richard Harding Davis, and he was writing a fan letter to him, like back when you wrote letters. And he, um, and he had gotten this letter a few weeks beforehand from this big publishing company executive, and it said, um, dictated, but at the bottom of the letter, it said dictated but not read, right? So like, to make it sound like, oh, I totally have someone that I, that I dictate to, and they write my letters for me, and I don't have time to read them. Um, so uh, when he got the letter back from Mr. Harding, um, it, he, he, he didn't get any message. It was just written on top of the letter he already written, and it said, your bad manners are exceeded by your bad manners, <laughs> which was funny. But that's pretty much what an outbound email like that is, right? It's like, oh, I'm way too important for you. Sorry. OK. So um, some things that we're going to be covering in this talk. Um, we're assuming that you like JavaScript. I hope you do if you're here by now. I hope you still do at this point. <laughs> um, you know about manipulating HTML using JavaScript. That's a little hard to read, sorry. And you have heard of email. I think we've all been there. So I figure if my email makes me want to cry on a regular basis, um, you may also have the same problem. And I think this is like something I commiserate with a lot of people about. Um, so I was building browser extensions for a while, and um, 
we're gonna go over some of the cool things they let you do. But um, one thing, being developers ourselves, um, you know, we have the ability to change the web we live in, right? We, have, we know what goes on behind the scenes and we can make changes and, and augment it to work better for us. So I thought that's what I would do with my inbox. Um, has anyone here written a browser extension before or have any experience doing so? So I see like three hands. Yeah, um, there was also before extensions, Firefox used to have that thing, oh, Grease Monkey Scripts. Did anyone write Grease Monkey Scripts? You remember those things? A little more, a few more of those? Okay, they're very similar. It's basically the same concept. Very similar. Um, okay, so we're gonna go over um, that, the rest of that cat says, I'm with tech support, just so you know. It's just so you're not missing the joke. Um, uh, so we're gonna go over how to build them a little bit before we get started. Um, so this is uh, an image I actually found today. Um, I was trying to find an image of different browsers relating to cats, and I found this. <laughs> and it's just hilarious, so I had to include it. Um, but you can uh, write extensions for all these browsers, except I think AOL. <laughs> Look at the suicide cat, he's so sad. <laughs> cat, he's so sad. Um, but anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm like gonna leave this up for you. <laughs> <laughs> Even it's a wonderful place, full of magical images. So, um, so anyway, you can you can write extensions for all these browsers, except I think AOL. I don't think you can. Not, not that I know of. I'll put these online so everyone can find that later. So uh, extensions are built with, and then the bottom of that says JavaScript. So that's what you need to know in order to build a browser extension. Um, oh, the rest of the slide says sorry. <laughs> um, so. The, uh, the most difficult thing to get your, like, wrap your mind around when you're a web developer and you're building a browser extension for the first time is, that, uh, is the file system, right? So uh, browser extensions have a few different files that you can work with, and each of them do different things and have different permissions. So um, it's not like something you've experienced in web development before. So learning about those files is the hardest part, because once you get past that, it's stuff that you do all the time. Um, so uh, I'm going to go over Chrome extensions because I built this extension in Chrome. But before I do so, I'm going to say that they're all very similar, um, like the different frameworks for building extensions. One frustrating thing about them, though, is that they all have the same concepts, and some of them call them different things, some close and some not so close. Um, but after you've done it for a bunch of times, you realize um, that it's really the same stuff. So um, but we're gonna go over building a Chrome extension. So, uh, and I'm actually not even, so what I'm gonna go into is the kind of files we're gonna use for this type of extension. We'll talk about some of the other things you can do, but um, for today, we're gonna learn about um, we're working with extensions that augment pages that you're, you're on on a regular basis. So um, there's a manifest file, kind of like, you know, node has package.json. Um, uh, Chrome has a manifest.json and it includes the same information. Um, your extension name, your version number, um, things like permissions, files that need to be included, stuff like that. Um, the good thing about debugging a manifest file is if it's not right, you can't even load your extension. So if you can't load your extension, that's what you've, that's what you've done wrong. Um, so, the biggest, thing, the biggest thing we're going to focus on today are content scripts. So content scripts are uh, JavaScript files that get injected right into the HTML of whatever web page that you're currently on. Um, oh, and I, put a, I kind of made a cool diagram, and I don't think I added those to the slides. We'll, we'll take a look at those really quickly after the slides and before we get into the code, because it's, um, it's good to envision kind of what the different parts of um, the different files look like. So the content script is one of the files. And um, it, like I said, it, it gets injected into the HTML after the page loads or before the page loads. You can actually um, set that in your manifest. Um, some cool things that you can do with content scripts is you can display API data from one site to another. Um, you could turn links into words into links to get their definition. I wanted to 
I have this like hackathon idea. You know, you have those things in the back of your mind you're going to build one day. I'm going to build an extension called like Merca that like changes all pounds to kilograms and inches to centimeters and stuff like that. So you don't have to do it in your head. Um, and you could uh, hide references to spiders on the internet. You can do all kinds of stuff. One famous, I don't know if you remember this um, from a couple years ago, but do you remember Cornify? It's like an extension that you could use to Cornify any web page. Um, so that was like a content script. Um, so one thing that's super powerful working with content scripts are the libraries that we use on a regular basis, right? So um, for instance, jQuery is a big one because when you're dealing with um, inserting HTML, right, you want those fancy selectors. So especially in the case of Gmail. Um, so when you're using a library with a content script, um, you should remember that you're inserting this JavaScript into a foreign website that you're not sure. In most cases, like in our case, we're just inserting it into Gmail. So we pretty much know what they have there. But the, most of the time when you're working with a content script, it's on, a, it's on every site, right? So you don't know if they already have jQuery. You don't, know, you don't know what's going on there. So you just have to make sure to troubleshoot for conflicts. So just be wise about your libraries. Um, another thing about... Uh, Another thing about extensions in general is that, um, and I think this, it would be a good time for me to have this, um, that I'm just going to pull it up, actually. I'm nervous about this because I feel like, yeah, something like that's going to happen. <laughs> um, but I think it's good to see a whole bunch of screenshots. OK. This is what I'm looking for. So. You don't see anything. I need to get this one, right? Here's this one. OK, so these are the different types of files you can have with an extension. Um, the one in the back is, um, you know, and this is your browser, obviously. The one in the back is a background HTML. Those are super useful. Um, a background HTML is an invisible web page that can live behind um, like as a part of your browser. So you can use it to communicate um, between tabs or to communicate um, to store information, you know, like s store, uh, uh, you know, information about the sites and, and process it. Um, and then the, uh, I don't mean instead of local storage, what I mean is more process information. Um, and then you have a pop-up HTML, and those are the extensions, you know, that have um, an icon on your, on your toolbar that has a pop-up, and that's an HTML page that is included with your extension. And then you have your content script, um, and that's what we're, we're talking about today, what we're looking at, and those, like I said, they get directly injected. And the reason why I bring up um, the, uh, the libraries and just being really careful is that when you're building an extension, um, these files don't really talk to each other. Um, the content script in the background HTML and the pop-up HTML in the background HTML, they talk to each other via message passing, but that's it. So if I include a, um, if I include a library in a content script, I can not reference that library in my background page without passing it via a message. So I would just likely inc include it again in my, in my background page, but that could get very costly, right? So if I have all of these items in an extension, um, I could be loading things, different libraries, three or four times. So um, that's just something to keep in mind, not something we're going to run into today. OK. Oh, I did include that one. Look at that. Um, so when you, you um, are done with a Chrome extension, you can put it in the Chrome store. Um, it's, uh, you can charge money. You could not charge money. Um, you don't need to get approval. You do need to get approval. You, they will take you down if your images are weird. There's a lot of different images that they force you to have, like sizes. So, um, and they have um, good support on the Google roof. If you run into problems, that's the best place I found to find information. And it's $5, <laughs> which is just like a random number. So it's $5 to put your, um, like your, it's like your development um, dues. Um, and it's a, pretty, it's a pretty place to have your extensions. And it'll tell you how many people are using it and if they run into problems. And people can leave reviews and things like that. OK. So let's talk a little bit about um, 
the extension we're going to be looking at today. So I called it SpaceX Gmail. I think you can know like when I built it. It was like three months ago. Um, and what it does, hold on. So what, what it basically does is I used um, a keyboard shortcut mapping library, Keymaster by Thomas Fuchs, um, and then just some HTML manipulation and things that were specific to my personal needs. One thing about this is that I have um, a file that's specific to me. And the idea is you add your own file that's specific to you to, to th make your life easier and um, make things easier for you. Because we probably have different pain points when it comes to email. Um, so uh, so there's, a, um, there's also a, one, like a version that you can use and add your own file. That's what we're actually going to do today together. Um, so there's a couple problems when you're, um, so browser, so injecting random JavaScript into other pages can be difficult. Um, but the um, Gmail is particularly frust frustrating. I don't know if you've ever taken a look at um, the source of Gmail. But um, so I'm pretty sure, and they won't say yes to this, but um, Google Web Toolkit is something they have that takes Java code and turns it into HTML, CSS, which is like, why would you want to ever do that? Um, and what it ends up coming out looks like this, right? So it would be kind of obfuscated in the way that IDs and classes were dynamic, never really the same. Um, and uh, they s say now that it's not using Google Web Toolkit. I think what ended up happening was that they built it that way, and so they just kept it that way. Um, so anyway, it's really ugly. So it's kind of rough to deal with. And then they have six or seven iframes. Um, that they, um, that they use, and only one of the iframes actually even has any um, information, any HTML in it. So that was, that's difficult to get past. They use it for, I don't know what else they use it for. Actually, I have no idea. All right, so let's take a look at, um, so what I'm gonna do first is we're gonna open up the extension, and then I actually made, so, so far when I've done this talk before, um, I've used my inbox to demo. Um, and that is always terrifying, because <laughs> you never know, you know? So this time I made um, a pretend inbox. Um, so, and so we're gonna actually build, um, we're gonna build a settings for my, in, for my new pretend inbox, so. Okay. All right. I feel like, is that big enough? These are my slides, actually, don't look at that. Okay. All right, um, so over here on the right, you can see, um, sorry, the, on the left. Um, on the left, you can see what the folder structure for a browser extension is. So I have a JavaScript file, I have my manifest, and I have a readme. I'm gonna. So let's take a look at the manifest, just kind of give you an idea of what this looks like. So like I said, I have the name of my extension, the version, um, a brief description, and I include what content scripts I have, um, what scripts to include, and in what order, right? So it matters what order I put my scripts in, because that's, that's how they get injected. Um, and then I can say when to inject the scripts, like if you wait for the end of document load, or if you want to do it in the beginning. And when you're working with Gmail, one very important um, property to set is the all frames property. And you want to make sure that that is true because there are so many iframes. And then permissioning. So here, this, um, this setting is saying only insert these scripts when we're in Gmail, right? So if we're not in Gmail, don't insert the scripts. So, um, so the guts of everything, now the two libraries I'm using um, are jQuery and Keymaster. Um, and Keymaster is a keyboard shortcut. Because um, I thought that mapping certain commonly used tasks to keyboard shortcuts would make my life easier. Um, so the guts of the actual extension live here. Um, 
And so what basically had to happen was going through and it's kind of tedious, right? Well, it, it is kind of tedious. So you have to find where in Gmail certain things exist. Um, so since they have changed the Google um, the web uh, toolkit, did I just hear, hear something? Oh, I thought I heard someone say my name. Since they have changed uh, the Google Web Tool, like not doing on a Google Web Toolkit anymore, it's been a lot easier um, because uh, it, you, you used to have to test for your views and see where you were, but they've changed something, um, and I'm not quite sure what actually, to make it so you, you don't have to do that. So things are a little less, what I'm saying is that this is a little less painful process than the first one I wrote. Um, but in this case, you just have to kind of look for patterns within Gmail. and so. I did that, and so I mapped certain functions that I think would be useful to people, right? So the ability to find all the unread messages, um, find the read messages to search content. One thing that's cool is that um, despite the fact that you're only seeing to, from, and subject, and you know, the first couple sentences of, your, of the message in your inbox, that entire message is actually there in the HTML, so you can search all the content of that message which is cool. Um, and I think, though, that you have to have that set up in Google Labs where you have like a preview. Um, so I'm not sure if you don't have that set up that that will work. Um, the composing a message, populating mails. I have a button click simulation um, and, the build, and getting which particular frame um, is currently being rendered. Um, so with, with these functions, I made my Sarah it's a smaller screen. I have it in another. It's complaining because I have it in another um, window. Oh, this is it. <coughs> Sorry. OK. So um, also, one thing to remember when you're making, um, when you're putting things on GitHub is um, that they live there forever. <laughs> um, because when you make something personal, like so the first time I did this, I put, so the functions that, we'll, we'll, we'll see. So the functions I made were things like hide all unread messages, right? So I wanted a keyboard shortcut to get rid of messages that had been unread. I just wanted to see read messages in my inbox. And then I made something called find an emergency um, where uh, I'm searching the content for a certain name. And then every email in my inbox that has that certain word is highlighted, changes color. And then the same thing with finding emails from my boss. And then I made one called um, uh, email my family, um, which uh, I included my family's email addresses in, um, in the first version. So please don't email my family. <laughs> no one's done it yet. So, um, And then a new work email. So what, um, and what these, these two functions do are open new emails and insert a whole bunch of um, the addresses to who and it populates the subject and things like that. Um, now, there are keyboard shortcuts that currently exist in, um, in Gmail, but none of them do this. You can make it a shorter process, but these are more like macros, I like to think. Um, okay, so what I and so let's just take a look. What time is it? What time do I have until? Um, okay, okay, okay. Um, so let's load this one, and then we'll make our own for my new um, inbox. Um, actually, that's not going to work because we're not using my inbox. So let's make our file first, and then we'll uh, put it in my inbox. First, let's see my pretend inbox here. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, okay, everyone, no one panic. No one else get online. <laughs> Do I have to? 
I don't think I have a proxy on. Suppose then if an open source is doing this kind of thing. Okay. Big money, big money, big money. You know, I think this is actually going to pull up my inbox. <laughs> this is not nobody look. <laughs> Oh, okay. A new tab? Okay. Well, Gmail's kind of what we need. Oh, got it. I see what you're saying. <laughs> I don't know why this is funny. <laughs> All right, so this is my inbox. <laughs> I don't know, you never know what might happen. Yeah, let's try to. Okay, here we go. And now I have to remember what the name was. I think it was Rockstar Sarah Cat. There we go. So I asked people on Twitter to send me emails. So I have a bunch of emails from strangers. <laughs> I did have to delete some of them. Well, let's have it. Did it just kick me off again? What just happened? Oh no. Yeah, but that should, all right, I'm gonna get rid of this one, I guess. Maybe like something Ajaxy happened in there. Okay, let's try this again. Okay. So one person sent me a lot of pictures of cats. <laughs> um, oh, there was one inappropriate email that I did not delete, actually. So let's. <laughs> um, the Bane Kitty, I haven't even looked at that one. Oh, and we can't. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's an inappropriate email. I'm going to get rid of that. <laughs> I thought I deleted that. <laughs> it's what, this is what happens when you ask strangers on the internet to send you emails. Um, okay. Um, so, so now I have this inbox and this is my inbox, right? So what's some things I can do to, um, um, you know what I can do? I can hide all, uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is hide all mentions of the word cat, right? Because like, uh, replace this with one of those annoying, like your guilt emails or your um, fab emails. Um, I don't know if you guys do fab. It's like the one time of the day that my, all my devices agree with each other. It's like when there's a fab sale, they're all like, woo! Um, okay, so we'll, 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 we'll make ours to hide all the mentions of the word cat. So we'll go back here. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, add a new JavaScript file. We'll call this one Rockstar Sarah Cat.js. Okay. So first, let's take a look at what functions we're going to need to use out of SpaceX. Um, so we're going to want to search content, and when that returns, we'll just hide that. We'll hide that div. Um, so we'll search content for the term um, cat. And we'll see if that works. So, um, so we'll name this function. Um, space. I think that was the namespace. Dot hide cats. Okay. So what we want to do is. Shoot, I just had it. What was the name of that function? Search content. Okay. So, search content, and we're just going to pass in the word cat. Okay, so we're actually going to create a variable, and we'll make it cat emails. So that should be returned um, there. And then what we'll do is we're going to hide all the cat emails.
Okay. So the next thing that I need to do um, after I do this part, um, and I'm really hoping that works. We'll see because I, I don't know if it'll hold the whole. It'll hide the whole thing. Let's find out. Um, now the next thing we're going to need to do is map the keyboard shortcut, and I actually haven't shown that file yet. So if I go over, ooh, ooh, ooh. okay. Um, so that file is called insert. Ooh, I just quit everything. That's not what I wanted. I broke it all. All right, that's okay. We're here. We are again. Okay. So let's open up um, insert.js, right? So here's where we're using the keyboard, um, the key master library. Um, this is where, after the page loads, we're ins inserting these keyboard shortcuts. Um, what I did here, and I don't, I don't know if you can see in the comments, because Gmail already has keyboard shortcuts, right? We don't want to overwrite those. So I included all the letters that are already taken by Gmail. Um, so. Uh, sorry, these are the letters that are not taken by Gmail. So these are the, the letters that are available. So what I do when I want to add a new one is I just do key and then the letter. Um, I see the letter, what's available? H is available. And then what function I want it to call. So what do we call our function? Hide cats. I'm pretty sure. SpaceX Gmail. Oh, that was my fault. I should change that in the other file. So this is correct. Thanks for pointing that out. That would have been an annoying thing to have to troubleshoot. So let's go back to our Rockstar Sarah Cat and so it should just be SpaceX. Okay, so I have my space act, uh, my hide cat function, and when I hit the um, the H key, it should hide all the um, my cat emails. So let's go back. Make sure everything's saved. Let's go back to my browser. Oh, good call. Thank you. You don't think insert was saved? Yeah, you're right. Thank you. Okay. Okay, we're good. All right, so the way I load my, um, my extension when it's ready is I go to my window tab and I hit extensions. And then I have to make sure to check off developer mode because if I don't, it hides all these options. So I check off developer mode and then I load an unpacked extension, which is how, how, what I use to debug. When it's ready, I can pack the extension. So. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so I just point to the folder. All right, so now I'm actually going to do a hard refresh. Everyone cross your fingers. So I just did a hard refresh and let's see if that works. Okay, let's see if we have any errors. Mm. Failed to load resource. Oh, um, and you wanna know what I did wrong? So, um, one thing that we need to do in order to make sure that my Rockstar Sarah Cat is being included is add it to our manifest, and that's something I haven't done yet. So let's go over to our manifest, and then I'm going to Ooh, I took away the quote. Okay. okay, so now this will include, make sure to include that. Um, so um, the way, when I make a change, the way I reload everything is I just hit the load there. Um, now let's go back to a hard refresh. Okay, now let's try it. 
Okay, so it hid the subject, right? So it found, it found the cat and it hit the subject. So we don't want that though, right? We want the whole thing to be hidden, obviously, um, and not just the subject. So let's see what we have to do there. Now what we are hiding is the div that includes What we are hiding is, let's look at our code. We're hiding the div that includes our subject. I don't know why this keeps happening. This hasn't happened before with, um, with BIM. Has anyone seen this? This caught dead leaf single, signal thing? I've never seen that. All right, so let's go. Okay, so let's go back in here. Um, so what it's hiding is the subject. Let's see what it's finding. So if we go into SpaceX, search content. So we're looking for something with the class td.xy. So let's go and find that td.xy, the td class, here, that's kind of difficult to see. Okay, so in order to, in order to um, hide the whole thing, we're gonna need the parent class, ZA, and it looks like that's pretty global, right? So what I found is that um, as long as you can find something else that matches it, another class, that usually that's the one that's going to um, always be there. So I think I can do, um, so the one that I hid is down where, oh, that didn't, in there. Let's go back. So here, the one that I hid. Okay, so that's this guy here. So I think I can just do parent ZA Y0. So let's do that. So I'm, instead of doing it in my SpaceX function, I'm going to do it right in my. Um, Rockstar Sarah Cat. Okay. So this is going to be dot parent, right? And the parent is Z A Y O. Okay. It's parent, right, not parents. We'll try this, and if this doesn't work, then at least we hit the subject. And then we'll take a look at some of the other, um, the other shortcuts that work, uh, that are mapped in already. Okay, so we go to our extension, we reload here, we do a hard refresh in Gmail, um, and we hide it, and I don't think that was it. It's not gonna find it. Okay. It was a space, but in order to do multiple classes, you need to do that dot in your selector. Um, does it have an error? No. It just doesn't find the, it just doesn't see the parent. Unless, no. It didn't work, right? No. Oh well. Okay, so some other things that we can see. Um, let's go and um, edit the existing functions just so we can see it in action. So the existing functions live here. And oh, okay, so the one thing that we can see is um, the insert family addresses, but let's So this one will, um, this find emergency one, this will search the content and change the color to red. So let's do that. We already know that's working. So let's reload this extension and we'll go in. And then the keyboard, the keys that they're matched to are in the insert. So we wanna look at, um, 
A P F E L. Okay. The insert. Of. Okay. Thank you. Great call. All right. Now reload. Okay. So. So when I hit the um. So. I should tell you what I'm doing first. So when I hit the key A, it opens a new email and it, it in, inserts all the um, the email addresses that I want to send this email to and the subject, right? So um, this is an office email and then I think it was F for my family. No, that may have been L. Okay, so L um, gets rid of all the red messages. So that was everything in this case. Um, and then what do we have? We have E and P, but those are searching for things that um, that don't exist in this inbox. So yeah, so basically they're just um, macros of um, shortcuts that you can use to map to your own things. If we had more time, we'd figure out how to um, how to hide that div. Um, but uh, I'll. Uh, when I put up the slides, I'll put up the um, answer to that. So um, anyway, that's a little bit about writing browser extensions in Gmail. Um, thank you guys so much for having me here in Shanghai. Wait, you have a question? Oh, Uh, excuse me, do you change the topic title? Because I thought it was about how to choose a uh, JavaScript uh, framework. Yes. Um, so I, I talked about this in the beginning a little bit. It was originally that, because um, I was going to talk about the process of choosing um, that we've gone through in my company. We actually haven't chosen yet. <laughs> so, um, so that's what made me decide to go with this talk instead. Thank you. Hi, Wen Okay. Okay. Uh, so extension. So every time I, like I see a cool extension, mm -hmm. I go install it, and I get like this scary warning, and then I'm reminded, mm, you know, this other pe person could do something bad with it. Right. Is that is that? So I only install Google extension basically. Right. So is that is that a problem that you've thought about? Like, so that's a really good question, and Google actually just changed something, um, because it used to be. So Chrome, um, when you push updates to the Chrome store, uh, they're pushed, right? So they, they um, automatically update remotely. Firefox is not. One thing that people used as a workaround for a while, um, and actually also used for Chrome because it's easier than like pushing to the Chrome store, right? So um, one thing that people did would host their scripts on their servers, and then in their manifest, just point to the script that was on their server instead of including it with the browser. Um, in, in, sorry, including it with the extension, right? And so with that, um, that's kind of scary because they can make updates at any time. I mean, it is already scary that you're installing something with scripts that you're injecting on your browser, but the fact that those scripts can be changed at any other time is kind of scary. So that's why you're getting those permission errors for the browse for the extensions that still have a um, not a local version of the scripts that they're including. Um, Google is now telling people, like, watch out. This is, this is serious stuff. Maybe think more before you do it. So, yeah, definitely. I, I only personally install um, extensions that, uh, from people I trust. That's a good point. Yang Guang, you before you have a question? You before you asked him how to become that teacher, you have this question. What is the answer? You can ask him again. Now, I'll just pop up, pop up a different question. So I used to I used to write a, uh, a Chrome extension. I don't want to store files locally, but uh, like in, but uh, except for writing some C extensions, there's no way to do that. I'm just wondering whether there is any way now, like in JavaScript, to do this purely in JavaScript. Um, do you mean to store the files locally? To like I mean that, for example, I see a nice picture on the internet, and I want to use an extension to like automatically save it into my computer. Right. So in your background at HTML, you have access to the local machine. 
Um, so the answer to that is maybe. So la last time I checked uh, with Chrome, I can write JavaScript to read files. But not write. The write file has, hasn't been implemented yet. Right. So, so yeah, as far as I know, that hasn't changed. OK, thanks.可以写我最近刚做了一个拆件可以写可以本地存储然后你就是用那个二进制文件直接存储就可以有一个这部分文件打包所以我可以用JavaScript说比如说写一个文件是吗你可以搜一下叫downfaster that yeah. listen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do we have a translation? Is it? Ah, yeah. She just supplemented your answer to Yang Guang. He just asked, uh, um, does Chrome provide the API to write the local file system? Yeah. yeah. She just he, he confirmed that Chrome has provided, or she confirmed that the Chrome has Got provided it. the API to write it. Write the real code system. Oh, awesome. Okay, yeah. Great, thank mm -hmm. you. Hi, Wenti Ma. Do you have a question? Do you have a question? No. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. for having me.